Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim in this video we are going to explain the fibrous flexor sheet and the synovial flexor sheet of the hand first of all if we look at this diagram we can see just below the skin if we remove the skin here we will see this is the palmar epineurosis in the palm region we have the palmar epineurosis and just proximal to palmar epineurosis here we have the flexor retinaculum here is the flexor retinaculum and this is the palmar epineurosis both of these are the modification of the deep fascia it's actually the deep fascia which is modified into the palmar epineurosis and uh, the flexor retinaculum in the digit region in the fingers it is modified into the fibrous flexor sheet you can also see in this diagram this is the palmar epineurosis which extend up to the base of the digits which extend up to the base of the digits and it is between the thinner muscle of the thumb and the hypothenar muscles of the little finger or the pep digit here are the hypothenar muscles these are the thinner muscles and between these this is the palmar epineurosis and below the palmar epineurosis we have the tendons which extend to the fingers for example the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis if we look at this diagram here you can see the palmar epineurosis is removed and below the palmar epineurosis we have the synovial sheet we will talk about the synovial sheet but before that here you can see this this is the fibrous sheet of the digits and there is two types of fibrous sheet the one is in the circular form which is called the annular fibrous sheet while the other is oblique in the form of cross in such a way which is called the cruciform fibrous sheet the one is annular and the other is cruciform here in this diagram you can also see this is the annular and between here is the cruciform annular and cruciform this is our fibrous sheet of the digits you can see on all of the digits we have this sheet which is below the skin and is called the fibrous flexor sheet and uh, inside the fibrous flexor sheet we have the tendons which extend to the phalanges of the fingers if we cut a transverse section here will we get a transverse section of a finger so this would be consider a transverse section consider this is the bone of the phalanx for example this is the proximal phalanx this is the bone of the proximal phalanx and above this is the fibrous flexor sheet This is the fibrous flexor sheet, which is anterior to the phalanx, the bone of the phalanx. And we, inside the fibrous flexor sheet, we have the tendons. We have the two tendons, one the flexor digitorium superficialis and other the flexor digitorium profundus. And between the fibrous sheet and the ligaments, of the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus 
we have the synovial sheet in between these there is the synovial sheet which reduces the friction as we move the fingers as we flex the fingers or remove the tendons so it reduces the friction between the fibrous sheet and the digital tendons consider this this is the synovial sheet and also below the pulmonary pneumonosis we have the common flexor synovial sheet here you can see it continues toward the fifth digit or the little finger this is our common flexor synovial sheet this is the common flexor synovial sheet which is also called the ulnar bursa it is also called ulnar bursa or the common flexor synovial sheet it is a synovial sheet surrounding the common tendons of the four digits one two three four the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis of the four fingers and here this was the flexor sheet this was the fibrous flexor sheet and inside the fibrous flexor sheet we have here you can see inside we have the synovial sheet and inside the synovial sheet we have the tendons the tendons of the two muscles flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus and this is our common flexor synovial sheet or it is also called the ulnar bursa or the common common flexor synovial sheet it extends toward the fifth digit and is continuous with the digital synovial sheet of the fifth finger now if you look closely in between the digital synovial sheet of the fingers the second third and fourth finger and between the ulnar bursa there is no synovial sheet here you can see there is no synovial sheet and this is the side of attachment of the lumbar muscles you can see here are the lumbrical muscles this it is the site of attachment of the lumbrical muscles here are the lumbrical muscles which are attached to the tendons of the, of the second third and fourth digit so here we don't have any synovial membrane and this is the reason if we have infection and any of the second third and fourth digit it does does not extend to the palm region it cannot extend to a palm or the carpus tunnel region of the forearm but if we have infection in the little finger or the thumb it can extend to the forearm and the palm because the synovial sheet of the little finger the fifth digit is continuous with the ulnar bursa while if we talk about the synovial sheet of the thumb 
So here we have a red synovial sheet. Here is the synovial sh sheet, parathem which continues and moves toward the flexor retinaculum and the forearm. And this is called the radial bursa because it is toward the radius and the other was on the ulnar side it was called the ulnar bursa it is called the radial bursa or synovial sheath of flexor pallicus longus so if you have infection in thumb it can extend toward the palm region and the forearm and 50% of the cases in 50% of population in 50% of the people they have the ulna versa continued with the radial versa there is a connection between the ulna and the radial versa here we have the ulnar versa and the radial versa in 50% of people so they have the chances that their infection of any of the thumb or the fifth digit they can spread toward the thumb and if they have the infection of the thumb it can spread toward the little big finger In this diagram you can also see this is the palmar epineurosis this is the palmar epineurosis which is turned over and below you can see this is the synovial common flexor synovial sheet which extend and continues toward the fifth digit while in between there is no synovial sheet and in the second third and fourth digit we have the synovial sheet which uh, originate from the base of the finger this originate from the base of the second third and fourth finger and then continues toward the base of the distal phalanx and then ends blindly so at this end is open while its distal end is closed similarly in this finger it ends at the base of distal phalanx this is the flexor synovial sheet and above the flexor synovial sheet we have the fibrous flexor sheet this is the fibrous flexor sheet this is the flexor synovial sheet and this is above is the fibrous flexor sheet in this diagram you can also see these are the synovial sheet the flexor synovial sheet of the second third and fourth digit and this is the flexor synovial sheet of the fifth digit which continues with the common flexor synovial sheet and this is also called the ulna bursa while on the thumb side we have the flexor synovial sheet of the pallicus longus and this is also called the radial bursa and in this diagram you can see these are continuous the radial bursa is continuous with the ulnar bursa here is connection between them while in this diagram you can see these two are the separate here is a separation these are separate from each other so 50% of people they have separate radial and ulnar bursa while 50% of people have radial bursa continuous with the ulnar bursa Here you can see the lumbrical muscles which are attached to the flexor tendons at the distal end of the palm and the proximal end of the digits. In this diagram you can see the fibrous flexor sheet which has two types. The one is a ring form circular 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The, this here this is the metacarpophalangeal joint this is the proximal anterior phalangeal joint and this is the distal anterior phalangeal joint 
here we have it, uh, these three joints the annular flexor sheet while in between there is the crust the cruciform flexor sheet and inside this you can see in the blue color this is the synovial sheet and inside the synovial sheet we have the two tendons flexor digitorum profundus and that of the flexor digitorum superficialis in the previous video we have discussed about the muscles so we know that the flexor the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis extend to the base of the distal phalanx this is the flexor digitorum profundus tendon this is the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus while the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis only extended up to the middle phalanx up to the base of the middle phalanx and it divided to two slips and to two slips the one was at the lateral and the one was at the middle side and in between these two slips there was an opening or space for the flexor digitorum profundus which moves downward to the flexor digitorum superficialis further we have two small structures which are the vinacula brevia and vinacula longa these two are together called vinacula tendina vinacula tendina there are two types of vinacula tendina vinacula brevia brevia and vinacula longa these are small folds of the synovial sheet which hold the tendons with the bone of the phalanx you can see in this diagram this is the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus and uh, this tendon is held with the bone by here you can see this this is the vinaculum here you can see this is the vinaculum and this is the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and again here we can see this is the vinaculum this is the vinacula longa and this is also the vinacula longa while there is the vinacula brevia and there is also an, another vinacula brevia the vinacula are the folds these are the folds of the synovial sheath which carry blood supply to the tendons and also hold the tendons, and tendons with the bone of the phalanx vinacula longa are slightly longer than vinacula brevia structurally both are same but in length vinacula longa are slightly longer than vinacula brevia here you can see flexor digitorum superficialis is attached on the middle phalanx and its vinacula longa is attached on the proximal phalanx similarly here you can see the flexor digitorum profundus is attached on the distal phalanx while its vinacula longa is attached on the middle phalanx so these are attached on different uh, phalanx here these two are also attached on different phalanx these are the vinacula longa it extend from one phalanx to another while in case of vinacula brevia these are short and attached both the tendon and vinacula brevia are attached on the same phalanx and its function is it carries blood supply to the tendon and also hold the tendon with the bone of the phalanx so these were the vinaculi hope the video was helpful thank you for watching allah hafiz